everybody, those of you who are joining us on site and online, it is good to have you with us this morning. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship by listening to our prayer. as you are able and face the font. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead, in baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving waters of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin, and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to the resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's needs through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ who with you in the spirit reigns forever. Amen. Let us sing together our gathering song, King of My Heart.
Christ suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives with and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our reading.
A reading from Acts. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of, to, is, <clears throat> to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or period that, periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Sam Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith. For you know that your brothers and sisters all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the singing of a gospel acclamation. Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him, and this eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from this world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, 
but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated and our youth and young at heart to come forward at this time. everybody. How are y'all doing? Good. Good morning. So today we are in between holidays. Those are very exciting, aren't they? Last Thursday, just a couple of days ago, do you have any idea what holiday it was? Which day? Thursday was Ascension. You didn't know that. Ascension is one of those little holidays that we don't usually make a huge deal of in the church, but it is really important. And it always falls on a Thursday because it falls 40 days after Easter. So I'm going to tell you the story of the Ascension, which is what we commemorate on Ascension Day. After Jesus died and rose again, what day did that happen on? What did we celebrate Jesus raising, rising from the dead? That was when he was born. The other big one that we've just had. Easter. Easter. On Easter, that's when we remember that Jesus rose from the dead. So after that, 40 days after Easter, he and Jesus and his disciples got together near Jerusalem. Jesus had some instructions for them. As you know, God is doing amazing things in the world, he said, and your help is needed. Your help, your help, your help is needed. We need you to go tell the stories about me. Tell your friends and your family and everyone you meet what you've learned by following me. Be my witnesses in the world. Then suddenly, Jesus was rising up into the air. What was going on? He was being lifted into a cloud. Jesus' friends looked around, and then suddenly there were two men in white robes that had joined them. And the men said, why are you just standing there looking up toward heaven? Don't you worry. Jesus will come back someday. But Jesus went up in the sky, but Jesus will come back one day, they promised. Right, said the one of Jesus' disciples. Meanwhile, we have some work to do, so let's go. Yeah? So they're all looking up in the sky because that's where Jesus did. But those two men remind them that Jesus will come back. And until then, we have work to do. Just like his disciples back then, we as his followers today have work to do, which is to be Christ's witness in the world, to share stories about Jesus, about what happened on Christmas, that Jesus was born, what happened on Easter, that Jesus rose from the dead, and everything in between, when he fed people that were hungry and healed people who were sick and visited people that were either grieving or were in prison, that we can do Christ's work in the world, that we can spread God's love, that we can be witnesses. Can you guys do that? Can you be witnesses in the world for Christ? Can you do God's work in the world? Share stories? I thought so. So now that Jesus is ascended, let us go and spread God's love in the world. Thanks for coming up. Thank you. 
If only we all showed so much enthusiasm for going out to share Christ's story in the world. Hmm? Let us pray together. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. In the very Johannine kind of convoluted repeat yourself reading this morning, we hear a lot about glorification. Be, having being glorified, right? That the son is glorified, that God is glorified, that they're glorified in each other and they are glorified in us. And so I got thinking this week, what does glory look like? When you think about somebody in all their glory, does that paint a visual for you? For me, some recent uh, news events that came to mind when I thought about what visually glory looked like was the recent coronation. The golden carriages, the long robes, the scepter and orb, the blinged out heavy crowns. That's one image of glory. Or think about just yesterday, the running of the Preakness, the glory of a nearly $1 million purse for the winner, a blanket of flowers as they spend time in the winner's circle. Another visual of glory. Just for fun, I Googled glory this week and then clicked the news tab. And so the headlines that talked about glory this week included the red carpet at the Cannes Film Festival. So you can imagine famous people in beautiful gowns and suits. The PGA Championship glory. There was one headline, welcome to the portal where college athletes can risk it all for a shot at glory. And I can only imagine that glory is fame, money, glory, right? Your name is known. That's the visual that I think of when I think about worldly glory. But when the glory of God is described in scripture, it's a little more elusive. When we hear of the glory of the Lord appearing or surrounding, think of Mount Sinai being covered in a cloud. There's lightning and thunder. Or in the tabernacle, when the glory of the Lord shows up again, lots of smoky clouds and bright lights. The only time in the gospel that we hear the specific term, the glory of the Lord showing up is when Jesus' birth is announced to the shepherds. And you, in the middle of the night, you get this bright light and all of these angels singing. For me, the glory of the Lord is less about the visual and more about kind of the feeling, the awe of God's glory, which is hard to describe sometimes. But from our readings this morning, we hear that the disciples expected the glory of the Lord to look a lot more like that worldly glory. They wanted to know when the kingdom of Israel would be restored when Jesus would kick out the Romans and would again sit on the throne. Back to that image of coronation. But Jesus says, guys, I know that I said that there were no stupid questions, but that's a stupid question. It's not about when the kingdom of Israel is going to be restored. It's about when my 
earthly, worldly, all-encompassing kingdom is going to be restored, your idea of glory is too limited. And in fact, the glory that is about to happen is probably not going to look at, at all like glory to you. For in this prayer that Jesus prays this morning happens right before he is arrested and crucified. That's where he is glorified, on the cross, not on the throne, not with a gold crown, but with a crown of thorns. That is where God is glorified. For to for God to be glorified, it is literally making visible the presence of God. That doesn't just happen in the sparkly times of life. But on the cross, God's love for us is made visible. God's presence in the being of Jesus is made visible for us so that we might know how much we are loved and be reminded of that promise of eternal life for us. And then after Jesus dies on the cross, is risen from the dead, ascends into heaven, it is left to the church to continue to glorify God. Jesus is very careful to pass all that he has on to his disciples, the disciples of the time and those of us that come after. Jesus has given us the words, has called us to finish his work in the world so that in the world, God can continue to be glorified. Not, it's not just about making church buildings look awesome, the bigger the better, or worship like a show or a coronation. That's not how we glorify God in this world, but we glorify God with our work, with how we witness, sometimes with our mouths and sometimes with our hands and feet. It is when we are about God's work in the world that we glorify God, that we make visible God's presence in the world. For now that God is not limited to one human form in Jesus, we can be all the more assured that Christ is present in each and every one of us that we are beloved children of God and that we are capable of doing God's work in the world, feeding the hungry, visiting the lonely, clothing the naked, housing the homeless. That is how God is glorified. Glorified in us, glorified in the son who is in us how God is glorified among us and we are able to experience God's presence right here and right now in the midst of eternal life. Not some far off promise, but right here, right now in our midst. But just as Jesus prays for his followers before his death, he knows that it's not gonna be easy and it remains not easy. Just because we are about God's work does not mean that the world is going to embrace our definition of glory, embrace us and join us in the work with no questions asked. We still bump up against the world's definition of glory in ourselves and in others. We, it's still a struggle to be about God's will, God's definition of glory, bringing glory to God instead of ourselves. 
And so I hear this prayer that Jesus prays for his followers on the night of his arrest being for us as well. And like them, we get to overhear it. And we're reminded that we are not left alone in this work, but we being surrounded by God's glory, knowing God, knowing that we are beloved children, that Christ is in us, that we have been promised love and eternal life, can go out and share that in all that we do, giving glory to God. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and sing with us the song of the day, Lord of Light. church let us confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed we believe in one God the Father the Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only Son of God eternally begotten of the Father God from God light from light true God from true God begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United in hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church and the world and all in need. Care for all children, show your steadfast love to those suffering isolation, especially exiles, refugees, or prisoners. Break the chains of all held fast by systematic oppression of any kind. Comfort all who are afraid or suffering from illness, especially those listed on our prayer list and those we name now aloud. That was silently. You raise your saints to new life in Christ. We give you thanks for all your saints who have given us glimpses of your redeeming love. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. one another, both those we are physically gathered with and across our congregation on site and online.
stand as each week during our worship we take time to acknowledge that all we have is a gift from god our time our talents and our treasures and they can all be used to glorify god to be witnesses to christ's message and to do god's work in the world we are thankful for all of the ways that you partner with us here at grace uh, to be servants to all people whether that be a gift of a time and talent or a financial gift, one time or sustaining gift, one given electronically or put in the plate at the back of the sanctuary. All of these join together to glorify God. And keeping them all in mind, I invite Millie to pray our offering prayer. Please stand if you are able. Let us pray. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self, we give thanks for all these gifts of the earth and breaking of this bread, reveal us the risen one and pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your son to be our redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come and know Christ, broken and poured out for you. For those of you who will be communing from your pews or from your homes, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. I will 
Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit and live in the new creation. Amen. If there are any announcements for the good of the gathered, either on site or on Zoom, please uh, indicate that now. If you're joining us on Zoom, put a note in the chat if you have an announcement. Are there any announcements in the sanctuary? Come on up, Faith. I assume I know what you're going to talk about, so let me let me preface it by saying next Sunday, the 28th, is Pentecost. So there are a couple of things going on. We are, number one, starting summer worship hours. So there is one combined worship throughout the summer, and what time is it at? 9.45. Gold star, 9.45. You can come for 8.30 and just hang out. But worship will start at 9.45 throughout the summer, but starting next Sunday, May 28th. During worship, we will uh, see five of our youth affirm their faith and become adult members of the church. You're encouraged to wear red uh, or other fiery colors 
as a sign of the Holy Spirit's continued work. And after worship, we will be having a potluck um, lunch. So there's a sign up sheet in the North X sign up um, to, to come to the potluck and also bring a side dish or two um, for everyone to, to share. Thanks. Yeah. So join us uh, in giving thanks and praise uh, to God, to the Holy Spirit, and uh, give especially celebrate our youth who will have affirmed their faith next week. Are there any other announcements? That's what I wanted to highlight. There's lots more information about what's going on uh, this week and every week. You can check out the announcement sheet, which is downloadable with our bulletins from the News and Upcoming Events page under the calendar tab of our website, www.gracelutheranchesapeake.org. On the website, you'll also find the archive of our emails. Every week we send out a scoop uh, email on Saturday morning that will tell you uh, everything that's going on for the week. And you can find all the Zoom links for every uh, gathering that has a Zoom option throughout the week on that News and Upcoming Events page. The newsletter is also online and a new one will be coming out end of this week. So keep your eye out for June's newsletter. See no other, oh, by the ways, let us stand and sing our sending song, Trading My Sorrows.
Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks.